Hello, hello, I'm Brutton, one of our MCAT tutors here at Inspira Advantage, where we help students get accepted in medical school and other professional programs. Today, we're going to explore the complex roles of tumor suppressors and oncogenes in cancer biology, a really, really important subject for the MCAT. This could be anywhere from one to six questions on the bio section, so we definitely want to make sure you understand these concepts. Let's start with the basics of cancer biology. Just make sure we're all on the same page here. Cancer fundamentally is a result of uncontrolled cell division. This process is typically regulated by just tons and tons and tons of genes, along which tumor suppressors and oncogenes are critical. Tumor suppressors act as the cell's defense against uncontrolled growth, halting cell division in case of DNA damage or other cellular stresses. On the other hand, oncogenes are promoting cell division and growth they are the go signal in our cells. However, when these genes mutate, they often contribute to the development of cancer. A mutation in a tumor suppressor gene often leads to what we call a loss of function, just not doing what it should. This is sort of like cutting the brakes of a car. While the mutation that activates an oncogene can be compared to a stuck gas pedal, both leading to the same outcome, which is uncontrolled cell proliferation. A critical thing you want to understand for the MCAT is that cancer is always, always, always due to a gene mutation. You can expect to see anywhere from, like I was saying, one to six questions on the MCAT that require you to really understand what cancer is and what causes it, uncontrolled cell growth and a gene mutation. So let's dive a little bit more deeply now into tumor suppressors. These genes are the guardians of the cell. One of the most famous tumor suppressors is TP53, which codes for the P53 protein. This protein is often called the guardian of the genome. This is because of its role in preventing mutations. When DNA damage is detected, P53, the tumor suppressor, will stop the cell cycle to activate DNA repair mechanisms. If the DNA damage is irreparable, then P53 will initiate apoptosis, saying, hey cell, you are too damaged to repair, you need to kill yourself so you don't cause cancer. This sounds pretty good, and it would prevent cancer. So how could this then cause cancer? Well, imagine a scenario where TB53 is mutated and loses its function. The cell now lacks its primary defense against DNA damage, allowing mutations to accumulate, potentially leading to cancerous growth. Essentially, the cell is losing its ability to put on the brakes of the cells cycled. Moving on to oncogenes, these are genes that typically promote growth and cell cycling. These genes don't take nearly as much brain power to figure out how these things could lead to cancer. If the genes are mutated in some way that causes them to become overactive or expressed at higher levels, then we start to get uncontrolled cell growth, aka cancer. To keep using the car metaphor, this is like putting the gas on the cell cycling. So as we can see here, we've got our green good oncogene. It's working, it's functioning, it's slowing down when it should. But when we mutate it, it's ignoring the speed check. It's just flying on through, causing cancer, causing cell cycling, eventually causing problems like death. Here's another quick overview. Again, you don't need to know exactly what P53 is. P53 is just an example, but you do want to know what tumor suppressors are doing, which one of the big things they do is fixing DNA damage. I also want you to just think about the balance between tumor suppressors and oncogenes right now. It is totally vital for maintaining normal cell function. A disruption in this balance through mutations in either of these types of genes will lead to the development of cancer. This intricate interplay is a key focus in cancer research right now, providing insights into targeted therapies and personalized medicine. Let's finish off this episode with some problems and a recap of the most important information you need to rock the MCAT. For the first practice problem here, just consider a cell with a damaged DNA and a non-functional TP53 gene. What are the possible consequences of this? Well, without a functional P53 protein, the cell may not adequately repair its DNA or initiate apoptosis, leading to the survival and division of a potentially cancerous cell. Not good. How about if a patient has breast cancer with amplified HER2, which is a potent oncogene, what would be the potential impact of the cancer's characteristics? Well, if we amplify this oncogene, HER2, in breast cancer, this is going to cause a more aggressive tumor. Again, we're slamming on the gas. We're going to have a rapid growth and a higher likelihood of metastasis. Understanding tumor suppression and oncogenes is absolutely crucial for grasping the fundamentals of cancer biology, which you 100% will need for the MCAT. Don't miss out on these easy questions. Really make sure you understand oncogenes. Add these bad boys to your Anki deck and you will be absolutely okay.
the big things you need to take away from this episode, cancer is caused by mutations in genes, not mutations in proteins. It is at the genome level that we are having cancer. Two, tumor suppressor genes are fixing mutations, causing dysregulated cells to go into apoptosis and overall slowing down the cell cycling. And oncogenes, those are speeding up cell growth, preventing apoptosis, maybe causing metastasis, making cancer bad. There's a lot of things oncogenes could do to make cancer worse or to make cancer cancer. These are the things you want to keep in mind when you're tackling a cancer-based question on the MCAT. And I want to thank you so much for watching our video on cancer biology, and I will see you next time.